Liberalism. Chapter 4. Were 18th and 19th century England and America liberal? Section. The Elusive Liberalism of de Tocqueville's America. How should we define the political regime which, following the Dutch prologue and starting from the liberal revolutions, was established first in Britain and then in the United States? As regards the latter, Washington was in no doubt. We have seen him immediately after the achievement of independence celebrating the wise and liberal government his country had given itself. Some years later, on the eve of the ratification of the federal constitution, which consecrated a strong executive power, the general president coined a kind of advertising slogan, declaring himself in favor of a, quote, liberal and energetic government. Yet if by liberalism is meant every individual's equal enjoyment of a private sphere of liberty guaranteed by law, quote, modern liberty or negative liberty, it is not difficult to perceive the rather problematic character of employing such a category. Even if we discount the problem of slavery, we know the condition of semi-slavery to which notionally free blacks were subjected. We can ignore the population of color in its entirety and still not thereby arrive at a different result. Those in the United States who were untainted by any crime, but interned in workhouses that were, as the Tocqueville himself acknowledged, an integral part of the prison system, did not exactly enjoy civil equality or modern liberty. And that is not all. Such was the condition of the poor that, even in their capacity as witnesses, they were locked up in prison until the legal proceedings were over. And thus, quote, in the same country that the plaintiff is put in prison, the thief remains at liberty if he can pay a bail bond, end quote. Of 3,000 examples which might be given, there was that of two young Irishmen, quote, detained for a whole year while waiting for the judges to deign to hear their deposition. We can now come to de Tocqueville's unanticipated conclusion. We are dealing with laws consolidated by customs, which yet can seem monstrous. They, quote, have provided everything for the convenience of the wealthy and virtually nothing for the protection of the poor of whose liberty, quote, they dispose cheaply, end quote. But let us now pass over both populations of colonial origin and the poorest strata of the white community, who were denied not only political rights, but also, quote, modern liberty. Let us focus exclusively on the dominant class, i.e. on white male property owners. Did full civil and political equality obtain in this milieu? There are reasons to doubt it. One thinks of the, quote, three-fifths constitutional provision on the basis of which, in calculating the number of seats due to the southern states, partial account was also taken of the number of slaves. Far from being a negligible detail, this clause played a significant role in the history of the United States. Quote, four southern voters ended up exercising more political power than ten northern voters, end quote. Thus is explained the Virginia dynasty that long succeeded in holding the country's presidency. This was why Jefferson was branded the, quote, black president by his opponents. He arrived in power thanks to the inclusion in the electoral result of blacks who remained his slaves. On the eve of the Civil War, Lincoln proclaimed polemically, quote, It is a truth that cannot be denied that in all the free states, no white man is the equal of the white man of the slave states. End quote. This was a thesis repeated in 1864 by a French liberal, Edouard Laboulet. With the three fifths clause, it was as if the U.S. Constitution was addressed to quote, the folks of the South. Beginning of long quote. Because you have slaves, you will be allowed to elect a representative with 10,000 votes while the Yankees of the North, who live off their own labor, will require 30,000 votes. The conclusion for the folks of the South is that they constitute a particular superior race, that they are great lords. The aristocratic spirit has been developed and strengthened by the Constitution. End quote. Accused of breaching the principle of political equality within the dominant elite itself, 
The Southern planters replied by declaring that, in actual fact, the principle of civil equality was infringed to their detriment. They regarded themselves as suffering a negative discrimination, inasmuch as they were deprived of the freedom to transfer their human cattle to any part of the Union. They considered it inadmissible that owners of the instrumentum vocale should be treated worse than the owners of any other movable goods. As Jefferson Davis, president of the secessionist confederacy, declared at the moment of abandoning the Union, the North was wrong to hamper in any way, quote, property and slaves, to act, quote, to the prejudice, detriment, or discouragement of the owners of that species of property, which was recognized in the Constitution, and which on that basis should enjoy complete equality of treatment with other types of property, end quote. This exchange of accusations played a far from subsidiary role in the conflict that issued in the Civil War. End section.